Hey there, I am really excited about this lesson, which is all about Twitter lists and strategies for conversation, organization, and monetization. So Twitter is not the sexiest of the social platforms. It's not cute. And the truth is, it's really noisy. It's hard to understand for the people who don't use Twitter. Uh, and this is how I was before I used Twitter. It was I always, I never really understood why would anybody want to spend time on a platform where you're limited in the number of characters that you can use to send a message and it only lasts for seconds before it disappears. That's where Twitter lists come in. So we are going to learn how to use Twitter lists to organize, monetize, and strategize. So here's what we'll cover. Why lists are important how to create lists, how to add people to lists, how to subscribe to other people's lists, how to use lists to organize your Twitter feed, how to use lists to engage with your ideal clients, how to listen and learn what your ideal clients think, feel, want, and need, how to watch your competitors quietly, how to get alerted when anyone adds you or removes you from a list, how to find out what list you're on, how to use lists as valuable content to share with your audience and how to get yourself off of a list that you don't want to be on. Let's take a look at Twitter lists. So here we are, I am on my homepage on Twitter and I'm gonna click on my small avatar and go to lists. And there you're going to see two sections, subscribe to and member of. First, we're gonna talk about the subscribed to. In this column, you're going to see that I've got all these different lists and over to the right, you'll see my little avatar picture. And that tells you that these are lists that I have created. The other thing that you'll notice is some of these have a little lock next to them. That means it's a private list and no one can see these except for me. Um, the ones that don't have a list are completely public. When you add someone to a list that is public, they do receive a notification that you have done so. If you add someone to a private list, they will receive no such notification. If I click member of, this shows me all the lists that other people have added me to. A lot of, one, a lot of lists that say things like digital marketing, social media leaders, et cetera, et cetera. This one says super interesting. We're gonna talk about naming your list, but that's a pretty good one. Another clue that, that the, these aren't lists that I own are the fact that if you look over to the avatar picture, you no longer see my picture, but the picture of the people who created the list. The main reason lists are so powerful is that it allows you to see the tweets, have news happening, in real time from any particular group that you wanna hear from at the click of a button. For example, here you'll see Cleveland Media and you'll notice a little lockbox. Well, I created this list and there's 381 members. These are members of the media who I have established a relationship with. So of course I don't want my competitors looking at this list. And so it would be smart on my part if I checked in with this particular group on a daily basis to see what they're chatting about. So I'm gonna click on Cleveland Media. This was sent 12 seconds ago. This one sent 25 seconds ago. So as you can see, this is breaking news, fresh news, and if I wanna jump in and have a conversation with them, I'm able to do so. Here you'll see a list of mom bloggers that I have created. This is a public list. So when I click into that, again, I can see what these people are tweeting about right now. And I can jump in and start sharing and conversing with anybody in this list uh, where I see a good place for me to jump in and add value. Now, the other thing that is worth noting is that I can, you can see here that I've added 235 people to this list, but there are six people who are subscribed to this list. That means somebody, these people saw my list and they said, hey, I want to have that list. I want to have access to that list as well. And this brings me to the next of the really cool features that Twitter lists um, offers us. So let me go back to 
list that I am subscribed to. And I'm going to scroll way down. Right here, Social Media Marketing World has made a list of all their speakers. So I'm going to click on that. And of course, I'm already subscribed. So I'm going to unsubscribe. Okay. So this to subscribe to a list, you would basically find a list on someone else's Twitter account, then click subscribe. And as you'll see, there are more people actually subscribe to this list than there are actual members. But we're not going to stop there because I know that the people who would subscribe to a list like Social Media Marketing World 18 are probably or likely to be my target audience as well. So I'm going to click on the list of subscribers. I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to see if any of these are people who I want to connect with. And so this person, Sarah, is a social media manager living the sunny life in San Diego. Okay, so let's suppose I want to add her to a list. This is how we would do it. We're going to click the three dots. Then the drop down shows us add or remove from lists. And then I'll pick a list uh, that I think would be suitable. So for now, I'm just going to add her to this private list that I've created that's called people to watch. So now this leads me to the topic of lists as content in and of themselves. So let's go back to this list that I've created called mom bloggers. Well, there's a lot of people who might like to have access to this list. So I'm going to click on that list. I am going to come up here in the browser bar and I'm just going to copy that URL. So now if I'm creating a newsletter, then I can put the link in the newsletter and share it with my audience. I can share that link anywhere you can share any kind of link. These lists become a piece of content that's very valuable for your audience. What are the, what are some lists that you could create that would be valuable to your audience? It could be a list of your favorite industry tools or your favorite blogs that are related to your industry. So you'll find in the downloadable workbook that I have left space for you to start jotting down some ideas of ways to use your lists as content. This is a good time to talk about your list title and your list description, particularly if your list is going to be public. I have several provocative names that I have used for my list, and I have done this for one reason and one reason only. That is to inspire curiosity in the person to whom I am adding to a list. That way, they're going to get a notification that says, Jen Lehner has added you to a list called Smarty Pants. That person is probably going to be curious and what's going to happen when they get that notification if they're curious. They're going to go back to your profile and see who you are. So this is what I call the tap on the shoulder technique. So you tap someone on the shoulder, they're going to turn around and see who tapped. And that is why your profile optimization is so important. When they do come back to your profile, you want to make sure that you've got something there that is worth seeing. And in this case, in this example, you can see I am promoting a webinar. Now, who might we want to engage for a the tap on the shoulder technique? Again, this is in your workbook, but of course, anybody who's your ideal client, um, but maybe you're looking for people that you'd like to collaborate with. So I have a list that says, podcast guests. So if I add someone to the list podcast guests, but they're not really a podcast guest yet, they're going to be curious because the first thing they're going to say is, wait, who, who is this? Do I have an appointment coming up? Etc. If you name your list reporters looking for experts, and, and then you would nail down what, what that is as it relates to you. So I would say media looking for digital experts. And I probably can't use that many characters, but you get the point. Also, tapping into the idea as lists for content, along those same lines, you want to be thinking about resource lists. So you definitely want to have, just even for your own, uh, for your own use, 
a local list, a couple of different local lists. So you might have local nonprofits, local businesses, local restaurants, whatever. I have one that's just called Cleveland, and I sort of dump everybody who's in Cleveland into that list. And whenever I want to see what's going on in Cleveland, I click into that list. And then, of course, we looked at the list called Media. How about a list of competitors? You definitely want to make that one private, but I recommend doing that, not because you want to smoke them out, but it's just great to see what other people are up to. You might want to have a list of just people who quite often engage with you or retweet your stuff so that you can quickly click in and return to turn the favor to them regularly. Lists are also a great way of staying in touch with a particular group. So whether that's Twitter chats that you participate in or a staff directory for your company, event attendees that you want to keep up with, classmates, neighbors, friends and family, you can add them to those people to a list as well and it helps you to stay engaged with those groups. All right, number one, we're going to ignore because that is no longer an option. Uh, let's look at the second one. This is the only way to remove yourself from a list. Ask the person first, and if that doesn't work, block them. So let's suppose you want to just, you want to follow everybody who's in a particular list. Simply click follow next to each person who is a member of that list. But this is a good time to mention that one of the beauties of lists, as you may have noticed, is that you don't have to be following someone in order to add them to a list. This is what I do to increase the likelihood that someone responds to my tweet. I send a video tweet. So this is a feature that is right there embedded in your phone in the Twitter app where you go to tweet and you will see the, a picture of a camera. So it's really great if you want to start a conversation with someone, really get someone's attention, just turn the camera on yourself and say, Hey, Bill, I listened to your podcast today. I really agree with you about X, Y, and Z. And, you know, can't wait to hear the next episode. Something as simple as that. It definitely gets people's attention and they will respond. This is how I can share my list and get subscribers. Click on the list, as I just showed you, then copy the link and then share the link anywhere. Now, who do you follow? What do you do to be notified when someone adds you or removes you or changes you on a Twitter list? This account, it's its an independent account called List Watcher. And if you follow this account, uh, you'll get notified when someone adds you, removes you, or changes you in a Twitter list. And of course, you'll get notifications from Twitter as well when you're added to a list. A couple of other things worth mentioning, you can have up to a thousand lists. There can be up to 5,000 members in a list. The list title can't be more than 25 characters. You can add people to multiple lists. The list can be public or private. If your list is public, the person will be notified. So that's it for Twitter lists. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure and download the workbook that is attached to this lesson.